Hi, my name is Rosina. I am a private Persian teacher and translator, and I am the founder of Learn Persian with Rosina. I usually create my videos in Persian, but today I decided to record an English video because I would like to show my favorite online dictionaries to you. If you are learning Persian, having a printed dictionary is a must. I mean that nothing can replace the smell, the touch, the sound of a printed dictionary. But let's be honest, we all use online dictionaries nowadays. You can find all the links in the description section. And also, if you have any questions related to the dictionaries or my classes, don't hesitate to contact me you can find the link of my website also in the description section. But now let's see the dictionaries. Okay, and the first dictionary I want to show you is the Dictionary of Hayim. I really love the dictionary. It is a very comprehensive one. And another benefit of using this dictionary is that for most words, you are able to find the pronunciation as well. But let's see how to use it. So if you can type in Persian, you can just start to type. And if you cannot, then after this dictionary, I'm going to show you a good method to solve this uh, problem. But now let's see our word. So then we click on search and here you can see all the dictionary entries that include the word we are looking for. But if we follow the alphabetic order, we can find the dictionary entry, which is exactly the word. Um, so here we are and here you can see the pronunciation which is Gusfand, and here you can see the meaning. So Gusfand means a sheep. You can click on it and when the entry is longer, then you can uh, see the whole text. And as I promised, now I'm going to show you how you can type without being able to type or be without uh, having a keyboard, a Persian keyboard. So you can find many virtual keyboards on the internet and so you open the virtual keyboard and then you type uh, here like this and then you can copy paste uh, the word to the dictionary and here we are Okay, and our next dictionary is the Google Translate. And uh, yeah, my uh, Google is in Hungarian. Sorry for that. And I am sure that you are familiar with Google Translate, but maybe I can show a few new tricks to you. So Google Translate is an absolutely fantastic tool to use. Please, if you are a language learner, always try to translate words and not complete sentences because believe me in that way the learning outcomes will be better and be careful google translate works pretty well between english and persian but for example for hungarian because of the features of the language it is not the best so i would never use it between hungarian and persian and so you can use it in a traditional way. Uh, you type the word and you get the meaning, but you can also uh, type using the Latin alphabet. So just like this, and the dictionary will suggest the Persian written form to you. And it is especially useful when you hear a word and, for example, you don't know which Z you should use, then the dictionary will help you out. Okay, and another very practical use of the dictionary is that it can recognize a voice. 
So you can click on the microphone here and say something. Let me show. Man, that Tehran's in the gimikona. Wow, and here you are. It's like magic. So you turn on the microphone, you say something, and uh, the Google Translate will type the text for you. And on the other side, you can see the translation as well. Um, you can use that for videos or sound files. So you play the file and turn the microphone on at the same time, and you will get the written sentences and the meaning. And of course, the quality of the sound file must be good, but it usually works very well. Yes, and let's continue with Wikipedia. I am sure that you know Wikipedia, but maybe you never saw that you could use it as a dictionary. For usual words, you can use usual dictionaries, but when you are looking for special words, like names of flowers or special diseases or terms, Wikipedia can come in handy. So here is this mushroom. It is beautiful, but please don't eat it. Never eat it. It is very poisonous. But yeah, but go back to the translation. If you try to use the Haim, I introduced you, you there will be no result. And if you try to use uh, if you try to use Google Translate, um, yeah, you will just say like here it is written the Latin name Omanita Muscaria, and you will see the same uh, just in Persian Omanita Muscaria. And uh, also, if you come with uh, its other name, um, you won't find it, and you will again see the same thing just in Persian, fly agaric. But on Wikipedia, on uh, the left, you can change uh, the language. So like to Spanish, French, Hungarian, and here we need Persian. And then you will see that it has a common name in Persian as well, Korche Magas. So, yeah, so I think that this is a very useful method that I usually use when I face a very special term. And the last dictionary I would like to show you is a monolingual dictionary which I know can sound scary, especially if you are beginners. But I think that using a monolingual dictionary from the really beginning actually can be very beneficial for language learners. And maybe especially for difficult words in the beginning, the Persian meaning won't help you out. But what is certain? that in this dictionary you will always be able to find the pronunciation. Let me show how. So here with the help of the virtual keyboard uh, you can type a word. I'm going to type, let's go first with the short one and uh, yes. And uh, as uh, you know, Persian has historically long vowels that are written and short vowels that are not written, which means that some letters marking a consonant will contain short vowels that are not written and some will not. So, for example, here we can see a gof, a re, and the gof again, but we don't know how to pronounce it. It could be garg, gerg, or gorg. So uh, here in the dictionary, you can see first the word again, and then you can see the pronunciation here. Uh, and you can see that the first gof contains an O, so the pronunciation will be Gorg. And trying another word, a longer one, we can look at this one. 
Um, and so here we can see that uh, the verse has a lam, a be, a re, a nun, and a dal. But we don't know the vowels, we don't know the pronunciation. So let's see here. Here is the pronunciation. And so lam has an a. And then we know that we need to pronounce it as lab. And then re has an a again. So it will be like uh, labcha, and then n, a noon, and dal uh, have no vowels. So now we know how to pronounce this word. It will be labchand. And see you. the last one. Um, and maybe we can look at uh, meaning as well. So here is our word, uh, and we can see that. Only the meme contains a short vowel that is not written and it is an A, so it will be mar is, mar is. And the meaning of it is bimar, so it means sick, ill. Ah, uh, yeah, and I forgot to mention for the previous verse the meaning, so laphand means smile and uh, what was before it, and Gorg means a wolf. And thank you. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like it and don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to see you soon. Have a very nice day. Goodbye.